Okay, we're, our goal is to work with this circuit map below, but before we start, I want to talk about Ohm's law. So Ohm's law says voltage equals the current times the resistance. And just a couple of things so that we know voltage is in volts V, current is in amps, and resistance is going to be in ohms. It's this funny little symbol. It's kind of a, it's more of a top heavy one. Kind of like that. But anyways, so if you see those symbols, that's what it means. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to know. We also need to know that resistance and um, current are additive, meaning that the resistance of something, resistance one plus two, so if I know the total resistance, resistance one plus resistance two, how many ever I need, and the same is true of voltage. Okay. Um, so kind of some things to, to start with to know. You might already know them, might not have needed that review. So we want to find the total resistance here. So to find the total resistance, it's going to be this plus this, okay? Because I said it was additive. But we have this parallel circuit here. Parallel circuits, okay? That's how this RT of a parallel circuit is R1 over R. Two, okay, so when I look at this, then I can see that I want to find out what this total one R of one two is, right? So then R one is one twelfth plus one thirty six. So now to find this, I'm going to add this side. So I need to make this into a thirty six. So this is going to be three over thirty six. It's one over thirty six. So then R. 1 over r of 1t equals 4 over 36. I knew it was going to do that. I was putting it off, but I knew it was going to do that. Okay, equals, this reduces down, right, to 1 ninth. So then what we have right now is we have 1 over r12 equals 1 ninth. Now you can do this a couple ways. You could solve this, or you could just notice that these have to be the same. So R112 equals nine. So this means this is nine ohms. So when I look at this and I go back up to this, this right here is nine ohms. And then this is 16. So this one right here is going to be nine plus 16 equals 25 ohms in my total circuit. Okay, now I need to find the total current. Okay, so this was part A. Part B, I need to find the current, I need to find I. So I start with this, right? But I need to solve for I. So I'm gonna divide both sides by R and I'm gonna get that, um, let's see here, what did I just say? I wanted to find current. For some reason, I decided I was solving for something else. That's okay. So I need to solve for I, which I highlighted. So VR equals I. So the voltage was given in the problem. The voltage of the whole circuit is 100, right? So then this is 100 divided by my total resistance, which I just found, which equals 25. So I really want it to be that. I is going to equal 4 amps. Okay, so this is from part A that we just found. This was given in the problem. Okay, part C, ask the voltage drop across each resistor. So in other words, we're going to portion out that voltage between the two pieces, between the two resistors, that parallel circuit and that one all by itself. Okay, so again, we're going back to that same equation, same Ohm's law. We get to use it all this fun time. So now I'm back to IR, but this time I can stay in IR, right? Because I'm looking now for voltage. So the voltage of 1, 2 is going to be the I times this. Now this is going to stay consistent. So this is up here. So this is 4 times, what did I get up there? 9. So this is 36 volts. And then I'm going to do 3. Okay, so this is I3 times R3, 
which is going to be 4 times 16, which is 64 volts. And you'll notice these equal the 100 volts that's in my circuit. Okay, so that divvies out. Then my final step is to find the current through each resistor. So I'm going to go back to this. But now I want to find current, so I'm going to solve for I again. So VR equals I. I'm not sure why I'm writing it like that, other than it seemed like fun at the time. Okay, so I need to find I of 1. So I'm going to find, if I look at this, I need the voltage. And what was the voltage in that? Well, it's consistent across it, so it was 36, because it was 36 and 1, it was 36 and 2. So I can actually work these side by side if I want. The top of both of these, it's from up in the step we just did. But one's going to be 12, and one's going to be 36. So then this gives me 3 amps. And this gives me one amp. You'll notice this equals the four amps I got in part B. Okay, then this last one, I3, that's going to be, well, what did I get? I got 64 divided by 16, four amps. And it has to be four amps because it ha that one has to match B because it has to be consistent across. So I could have done that without it, but we can see it works out just like we want it to. So hopefully this helps you set this up a little bit and understand how to follow along with this type of problem.